Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias from Chichicheka.com here with a Photoshop Beginner's Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you something called the Lomo Effect. The Lomo Effect is typically an effect that's used by photographers, but I'm just going to show you how to recreate that effect right here in Photoshop. And here we've got a picture of Eli posing out in the middle of the road next to his Celica and as you can see we've got a nice depth of field going on here I took this picture with my my camera phone and if you zoom in you can see that my phone's got a crazy amount of detail with it because it's uh... it's an 8, meg 8 megapixel camera phone so yeah take some some crazy awesome pictures so anyway this is what this picture would look like with the Lomo effect. Bam. And as you can see, we've got a vignette going on around the edges. We've got some slight discoloration. And overall, it's just got some really sweet contrasting and it looks amazing. So let's jump right into this. I'm going to delete this layer because we don't really need it. And when you have your photo uh, opened in Photoshop, Go ahead and double click the lock on it if there is one and the name doesn't really matter so layer 0 is fine. Hit OK. And now we can get to work. So the first thing we want to do is go over here to our lasso tool and make sure your feather is set up to something really high like uh, 80 pixels is alright but this is a really large image so if you're working with something smaller you might want to dumb it down to 40, 50, somewhere in that area. And all you're going to do is make a selection kind of close to the edges. It doesn't really have to be perfect. In fact, you kind of want it to be curvy and wavy and not perfect. All right, so when you have your selection and you like how it looks, you want to go up to here to select inverse or shift control I for those of you that like your shortcuts and that should select the edge and your little wavy selection and if you open up your adjustments panel over here go ahead and click on the levels adjustment and that should make a levels layer down here which is masked out in the middle and all you want to do is take this middle point right here and click and drag it off to the right which will darken up the edges a little bit and that might be a little bit much right there okay so right there gives you a nice little vignette and it wasn't really all that hard to do alright so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and add some contrasting to it so if you click this back arrow which will bring us back to our list of adjustments go ahead and add a curves adjustment and what you want to do is click right around here towards your your darks and drag it a little down to the right and as you can see that made all of the darks darker over here or it made the entire picture a little bit darker and then go over here to about the center of this box then click and drag it a little bit up and that gives us a slight S shape and that just made the contrast overall a little bit uh, nicer and we're just going to do a little bit before and after to see if we like that and alright I think that looks well actually I'm going to lighten up the, the darks a little bit by dragging this closer to that center line that we had before and that looks a little bit better it's not too dark and the next thing we want to do is close up the adjustments panel by double clicking it and go down and create a new layer and we're gonna fill it up with black by hitting shift backspace and we're gonna use black mode normal opacity 100 percent hit OK and that should fill up everything with black and change the blend mode to hue 
and as you can see that made everything black and white and we don't want that we want to have some color left so we're actually gonna lower the opacity down to about 40 percent and that just if you turn that on and off you can see that sort of took away some of the color of the picture and the next thing we want to do is go up to image mode lab color and it's gonna ask you if you want to uh, discard some adjustment layers and we don't want to discard those we just want to merge them all into one layer so just click merge and then that will that will merge everything into one layer and we want to open up our channels which is right next to the layers and as you can see this isn't your regular RGB channels these are slightly different and you want to click on the lightness channel right here and then go back to your layers and with this layer selected go to filter sharpen unsharp mask and you want to set the amount to 50 percent the radius to 50 pixels and the threshold to zero and that looks good as it is so we'll just hit OK and then go to image mode RGB color and alright that's it you're done see that was nice and easy and very fast and it gets a really cool effect but I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you um, if you want this Lomo effect to look its best I'm gonna zoom in here real fast for you and push tab to get rid of the 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 menus so anyway you can see that this picture has a lot of depth of field added to it and in my personal opinion that makes the Lomo effect look that much better so if your image doesn't have as much uh, depth of field of this you're gonna wanna add it yourself and thankfully that's really easy to do and the best part is we're gonna teach you how to do it so we're gonna hop over here to a different image and this is a picture of Eli in his backyard making some sort of gang sign thing I really don't know what it is and I don't think he knows what that gang sign is either but I have a feeling that it's suggesting something about his nipples I don't know anyway Eli really likes depth of field so he's gonna be the one that teaches you how to add it into this picture and here he is <laughs> 